following video is by a special request from a ham radio operator. He has one of these DX60 transmitters. He wants to change out that two-prong cord with a three-prong grounded type. So here's how you do it. Well, here's the back of the transmitter. There's that two-prong cord from the 1960s. It enters here through the chassis and lands on this terminal strip and it goes through this little gadget right here. Many of you have probably never seen one of these, but that is actually a circuit breaker. This radio didn't have a fuse. It had one of these old glass resettable thermal circuit breakers. And guess what happens if they fail? If something goes wrong with your radio, it can't clear a fuse and burns up your power transformer. So that's got to go. A fuse will have to be added as well as the three prong cord. So the cord will enter here. We'll just have to make the hole a little bit bigger. But then we need to add some type of a fuse. So you could bore a half inch hole here and mount a 3AG chassis mount fuse holder. Or you could do something a little bit easier. Use one of these type of 3AG chassis mount fuse holders. They can go on with a small machine screw and there's plenty of room if you look over here on the rear of the radio show mount right there and then I'll simply swing the new wiring into the fuse holder then this radio will be fully protected with a fuse and a grounded power cord so here's the schematic right out of the Heath kit manual you can see your power cord comes in this side goes up through your function switch and there is the circus breaker they don't actually specify the value, but the input power of this thing is rated at 90 watts. So I'm going to go with a 2 amp fuse. Get this old cord out. It pop out pretty easily. Then I'm going to cut the wires back here, leave some runners so I knew where they were. But I did notice one thing that's going to be in the way of the new cord restraint. If you take a look up here, one of the terminals on that terminal strip it's going to be right in the way but it's not used so I'm probably going to just clip that off to allow room for the bigger cord re restraint that goes in there well I was in error the new restraint device is just a little bit bigger like maybe an eighth of an inch bigger than the original hole so I'm just going to take a stepper bit I should be able to get in there watch my inside wiring that I don't hit anything and open this up there's a new fuse holder installed. The AC cord is ready to be wired. I got two flying leads here. They're going to go over and replace that little circus breaker. Then after that, we'll be ready to test. Mission complete. You can see the new three conductor line cord coming in. You have a ground here at this point, and that lug is actually screwed to the chassis. You just can't see it. You got your neutral over here on the accessory plug. Our hot now goes through the fuse rather than the circuit breaker and then of course it makes its way back to the original lugs which go to the power switch and power up the radio so let's give her a test okay I powered up the heath kit now remember I chose a 2 amp fuse which should be more than adequate but we're just going to go ahead and transmit make sure we got power output in CW mode that should be drawing maximum current there's standby and now we're in CW mode. There's my transmit. You can see our power out over there. Dip it. Looks good. I'll give it a little more of a burn in test because I do plan on putting this rig on the air. But it appears as though the new three conductor cable and power fuse mod went well. All right, not too bad of a job, and it does eliminate the possibility of a flaky circuit breaker baking your DX60 transmitter. So I would highly recommend that you do this to your transmitter, and it's only about a half hour job. I'm not going to produce a modification kit because all this stuff is off the shelf. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you again.